Hello everyone, I'm Cody B, and in today's video I want to talk a bit about Borderlands 3 and in particular, the story. I had an idea to do this video for a while and I got a couple of requests, so I'm just going to be getting to it now. I've noticed that many people are not happy with the story for Borderlands 3, and if I'm honest, I was a bit disappointed as well, and there are several reasons for this. I really feel like the writers went for quantity over quality for the story, and that's very unfortunate, because I feel this story has a ton of potential, but just none of it really works. What I mean by that is, for the most part, nothing in the story really has any weight behind it. All the attempts at drama or suspense or even comedy really just falls flat. The story just doesn't really do anything to make you care about the characters, and in fact, I think it's actually the characters that really hold back the story. I say this because if you boil it down to just the plot, the things that happen, it's not structured poorly, but the characters and how they interact with the plot is what leaves a bad taste in the mouth of players, I feel. Now yes, there are some plot points that are kind of dumb, and I'll touch on those when they come up, but for the most part, I want to talk about the characters and why just for the most part they don't really work, and then in turn how that makes the plot points much weaker. Now, before we get too far into this, I want to say I'm only going to be talking about the base game's story in this video. Perhaps I can make more videos in the future about the DLCs, but for now, there is plenty to talk about just in the base game. Also, there's going to be lots of spoilers in here, so be warned. So the first character I want to discuss is the first character we meet in Borderlands 3 once we take control, being Claptrap. I really think the writers missed the point of Claptrap. Yes, he's kind of an annoying little robot, but in Borderlands 3, they really crank up the annoying part and completely remove any charm the character had in Borderlands 2 or even the pre-sequel. This is going to be a minor point, but I also don't really like the voice change. I know there were some circumstances that were out of the developer's control, so I'm not saying it's a bad thing that it changed, I just personally don't really like what they changed it to. But anyway, throughout the game we see quite a bit of Claptrap on Sanctuary 3. He doesn't really play that big of a role in the game, which is fine, especially with how he's written, because the writers honestly just made Claptrap super rude and selfish. Now yes, Claptrap has always been kind of rude and selfish, but he had a charm to him. His dialogue in Borderlands 2 was really good and witty, and you couldn't help but love the little guy because all he really wanted was some real friends. But in Borderlands 3, he's just a shadow of himself, doing things that I wouldn't see him doing, like locking people into a room, threatening their lives or defying him, or saying that he knew he should have joined the Calypsos when things get particularly bad in the story. He's no longer this lovable, kind of annoying character anymore, he's just mean-spirited and doesn't feel like himself to me. I find that really unfortunate, but it's kind of a theme in this game. Lots of characters have been stripped down to one or two character traits. It's kind of sad, because the characters, old and new, have so much potential, but the writers just didn't let them shine. One of, if not the worst cases of this, is Vaughn, a character we meet very early in the game, but they absolutely slaughtered his character. Let me explain to you who Vaughn is in Borderlands 3. Bandit life and abs. That's literally it. And it's so depressing because if you played Tales of the Borderlands, you would know that Vaughn was so much more than that. His character had depth, his friendship with Reese, who I will discuss later, felt so natural. He was just a nerdy guy with a big heart. And yes, he embraced the bandit life, but he was still himself. But now in Borderlands 3, they've taken away all of his character and focused on one honestly pretty small detail about his original character, being that he's actually really cut. In Tales, this detail wasn't revealed until well into the game, and it was just a little joke, honestly. It didn't become a defining feature of his character, so I'm not really sure why the writers decided this would be the one thing that would define his entire personality. There's also a little plot point that doesn't make any sense. So in the beginning of Borderlands 3, Lilith is searching for the vault map, and there was a report that there's a bandit gang called the Sun Smashers who found it, so naturally, Lilith goes to get it from them. Well, here's the thing. The Sun Smashers were run by Vaughn, who made zero attempt to contact Lilith about finding the vault map, even though he would definitely know that it was lost and that she was looking for it because he was there when Sanctuary was destroyed and the map was lost in the first place. They even address this in the game. Lilith asks him why he didn't tell her that he found the map, and he just says, oh, I let it slip out of my hands, sorry, and then starts doing apology push-ups, which is just as cringy as it sounds, but whatever, let's just move on. Next, I want to discuss Lilith. In this game, she isn't that bad, honestly, but personally, I think they should have taken a much different approach with her. So, I'm just going to put this out there now. The writers did a lot of stupid stuff with the sirens in this game, and it all starts with Lilith getting her power stolen by Tyrene, one of the main antagonists of the game. See, this removes the most defining feature of her character. Now, yes, I think they tried to go for the whole anybody can be special or you don't need special powers to be a good leader message, but honestly, I don't care about that. What I care about is the massive opportunity they missed out on. See, how about instead of her powers getting stolen, which, by the way, has almost no effect on the world, what if they just killed her off? Now, I'm sure there are some people who would very much disagree with me on killing off Lilith, but let me explain my logic here. So imagine how much of an impact that would have on the world of the game. It would be sudden and surprising not just to the characters in the game, but to the player as well. This could be an incredibly emotional moment, as Lilith has been in the series literally from the beginning, and would also shake the foundation of the Crimson Raiders to its core. 
Like, imagine all the remaining Crimson Raiders barely escaping Pandora as the Calypso's bandits are attacking. Then, when safely away, everyone is freaking out like, what are we going to do? Our leader is dead. However, luckily, there are these four new Vault Hunters who seem very capable. Maybe we put them in charge and have them rebuild the Crimson Raiders and take down the Calypso Twins. Instead of, you know, having the playable character just completely vanish from this plane of existence when a cutscene happens. Like, the playable characters could have been in the cutscenes. They're already voice acted, so they could have given them more lines for the cutscenes. You could have even had the player's personal customization options appear in them as well. This game actually could have been awesome. So let's just say this all comes true and they kill off the Lilith. The rest of the story wouldn't change so much, you still have to travel the galaxy trying to recruit the former Vault Hunters to the cause, all while trying to take down the Calypsos as we go and get stronger. Also, having Tyrene and Troy kill Lilith in the beginning of the game would have made them much more legitimate foes, because we would have a reason to want to bring them down. Because as the game is now, we don't really have much of a reason to want to bring them down other than, oh, well they're the bad guys, so I guess we want to shoot them a bunch. Personally, I just think Lilith would have made much more of an impact on the game if she died early instead of flying into the moon to stop it from exploding or something. And it even makes more sense because if you watch the cutscene where Lilith loses her powers, there's literally no reason the Calypsos didn't kill her. Like, throughout the game we see all these husks of people all over the place, and later we find out that that's Tyrene literally draining the life force from these people, but yet when it comes to Lilith, she only takes her powers. It's just plot armor and degrades the quality of the story. So the next character I want to talk about is Ellie. She's really annoying and I kinda hate her. Moving on to Tannis, I can say that I actually do like her character in this game. Her dialogue is well done, and I'd say overall, I just don't find her very offensive, even though I definitely feel she shouldn't have become a siren. As I said, the writers did a lot of stupid stuff with the sirens in this game, and this is one of them. Now, personally, I really liked the idea that to be a siren, you had to be born a siren. I mean, it was heavily implied throughout the games that it was like this, as every siren character we meet was already a siren, and characters like Angel and Maya talked about being a siren as a little girl, with Maya being cared for by the monks and Angel being put into the control core at a very young age. And hell, even Tyrene was born a siren, and even kind of Troy, which I'll talk about later. But this game completely throws that out the window, now anybody can inherit siren powers for some reason, and I actually don't understand why they did this, because it doesn't add really much of anything to the plot. It's just like, hey, guys, look, Tannis is a siren now, she'll take down some turrets for you, isn't that cool? Like, personally, I think no, it's not very cool, because it opens the door for a lot of other stupid things to happen later, like, <clears throat> Ava. But besides the siren stuff, I really have no complaints about Tannis, it was actually pretty cool to see a bit more of her. So now I think it's about time we discuss the main antagonist of the game being Troy and Tyrene Calypso. Now, these two have a ton of potential, but once again, they just aren't used to their full potential. I see flashes of greatness with these characters, but ultimately, they mostly just fall short. Their main thing is that they are streamers or something, and they are uniting all of the bandit clans of Pandora by giving them, like, a family, I guess? It's never really clearly explained why the bandits follow them, and the fact that they are streamers is a bit cringy, but anyway, they wield their army of simps to bring them closer to the Great Vault. So, the framework for their characters is kinda bad, and from what I can tell, most of the community doesn't really like them as main antagonists, which is fair, but personally, I don't hate them. Sure, they're not the greatest antagonists, especially compared to Handsome Jack, who they really tried to imitate in a lot of ways with them, like the whole kill yourself mission that Tyrene gives to you, or the overall snarky demeanor, which that I think is super lazy, because they aren't Handsome Jack. Yes, Jack was a great enemy that everyone liked, but we don't want another Handsome Jack in the new game. We want a new foe, not a lazy copy of what worked in the past. Anyway, however, I want to talk about what I like about these characters. So, Tyrene and Troy are sirens, kind of. Tyrene is a siren, and Troy is like a half-siren, because they were conjoined twins at birth, meaning Troy got some of the siren traits. Now, normally I would be incredibly angry about a male siren, but it's done so well in this case that I actually like it a lot. See, Troy can't live on his own. He relies on Tyrene to power him up, because Troy isn't supposed to be a siren, so his body is literally killing him, which is just awesome to me. Also, the tattoos that he has are red instead of the traditional blue that we normally see on Sirens. I just really like that detail. Furthermore, because of this, the twins have a strained relationship. Tyrene refers to Troy as a parasite, which is super cold, but it fits the character so well, and I think it's great. I wish they would have explored this dynamic a bit more. The other scene I wanted to mention that I really liked is actually the boss fight with Troy in the main story. So, basically, Troy has gained the powers of Maya as he, well, killed her. Yeah, I'm going to talk about that later. But he's using those powers along with Tyrene to open the Great Vault. The thing that really hits me with this is how Tyrene is screaming in agony during the fight, saying that Troy's going to kill her as he takes more and more of her power to fight off the Vault Hunters. Then at the end, when Troy's defeated, he thinks he's killed his sister, and after everything they've been through, the empire they've built has crumbled, and they have failed on their journey. His final words are... Ty. We were... So close. <laughs> the delivery of that line was beautifully done, by the way. I really enjoyed this scene until Ava came along and ruined it, but that's to be expected. It feels like for everything the story does right, there's always five other things there to ruin it. 
So some closing things, I think they had the potential to be fantastic foes, possibly even on the same level as Jack, if we could have seen some more stuff in regards to infighting between them, alongside giving them some more notable things to do and better dialogue, instead of them just making cringy videos of Maya dying or Lilith getting her power stolen that get broadcasted on Sanctuary 3. I think they would have been much better received by the fans if this was true. Alright, where to next? There are lots of characters in this game, so let's fire off a few that are less important. Marcus returns to take you on a little bus ride and sell you hella guns. He's got a ponytail now, which is pretty cool, I guess. And he makes some questionable burritos, apparently, so, well, you know, if you're hungry. There's also Moxie. She's still kind of pointless, but guys, guys, she's very attractive, in case you didn't know that already. Not gonna lie, though, this is probably the best that Moxie has looked in these series yet, so they must have some crazy space plastic surgery, because Moxie has to be pushing her 60s at this point, I'd imagine. The only other thing of note I'd like to mention about her really is that the hail is legit a really good assault rifle. Much better in Borderlands 3 than it was in Borderlands 2, and the one in Borderlands 2 is pretty great, so that is saying a lot. So let's talk about Promethea characters next, starting with Lorelai. Now, she's a completely new character who is literally completely pointless. Not the role she fills, by the way, but her. Why does she exist? By the way, her only character traits are that she has an accent and that she really likes coffee. Other than that, she's a plank of wood, basically, and I think she should have been replaced by Sasha, a character from the Tales of the Borderlands. Sasha would have made a ton of sense to be in this role as she is dating Reese, who is the leader of the Atlas Corporation, and if you played the Tales game, you would know that running around the battlefield and such would be totally up Sasha's alley, but no, instead we get this random new character who has no real impact on the story. A fun fact though, there is a picture of Sasha on Reese's desk when you go into his office before the Katagawa boss fight, so she is clearly a part of Reese's life still, just never really mentioned in the game. You know, I kind of like Sasha, and a lot of the characters in Tales of the Borderlands. It was a shame that more of them haven't been utilized in the story. Perhaps in later DLCs they'll show up, but I think it would have been very easy to fit them into the main game, but, you know, what do I know? I'm just a guy on YouTube. I suppose it's actually time to discuss Reese. So he's not quite as bad as Vaughn with the whole getting his character stripped down to one thing, but he still doesn't quite feel like the character that he was in Tales of the Borderlands. But it is pretty cool to see him fully up and running the Atlas Corporation. Personally, I think they just made him a bit too cartoony and a bit too simple-minded, which isn't terrible, I guess, but here again, I think there's a lot more that could have been done with this character. Also, I just find it a bit jarring that he didn't ask about Vaughn, like, at all, or vice versa in that matter, because in the Tales of the Borderlands, their bromance, you could call it, was super well done. But if you just played Borderlands 3 and knew nothing else about the characters, you wouldn't think they had anything to do with each other at all, and it's a bit of a shame. Now, I'm not saying there needs to be this big, bombastic scene where they reunite. Just a quick little thing from Reese saying something like, Oh, I heard Vaughn was running around on Pandora with the Crimson Raiders a while back. Have you seen him lately? How's he doing? It's simple, but it would have been a nice little bit of fan service for people who have played Tales, and it would have made people who haven't played it at least want to learn more about why this guy is asking about Vaughn, engaging the player even more. The only other thing I really want to talk about for Reese is the joke they have in the game regarding his mustache. It was an okay joke in the beginning, but then they pushed it way too much and ruined the joke. Personally, I didn't really care about it very much, but the game just kept bringing it up and forcing you to give an opinion on it. I just said it was nice because whatever, I don't really care. But the point I'm trying to make here is stop trying to force comedy. It never works when you do that. The mustache isn't the only instance where this happens, but it's the one I'm going to mention to make that small point. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the single most annoying thing in this entire game being Ava. Now, everybody hates Ava, and with good reason, is because she's bratty and, well, just as I said, super annoying. This character is given way too much importance for literally no reason. It's almost like the story for Borderlands 3 is a fan fiction written by Ava. That's my new game theory, and, you know, you heard it here first. So, here again, Ava was handled completely wrong by the writers, but I do think the character had some potential. Now, yes, there's the argument that Ava didn't need to exist at all because everything she does could, and let's be honest, should have been done by Maya, but since she does exist, let's talk about what's wrong with her and what could have been done to make her better. So, starting things off, she has an awful attitude that everyone just puts up with for some reason. I mean, yes, she's a young teen, those tend to be rebellious, but she never grows out of it and learns nothing throughout the entire story. But you know what? I could have forgave that, but there is one thing that I can't forgive, and that is that she got Maya killed. Now, just a little fact about me, Maya happened to be my favorite character in Borderlands 2. Not my favorite character to play, as that was Zero, but my favorite character personality-wise. And the writers just did her super dirty with how they killed her. Now, I'm going to go on a quick little rant here about this whole death scene. I get it was important to the plot, but it was just done horribly. So Ava decides instead of listening to Maya and standing on the ship, she's going to come down and be an angsty teen and get herself captured, forcing Maya to defend her. Then Troy drains Maya, literally turning her into dust, which was just rough. My question is, why didn't Maya just lose her powers like Lilith did? How come Lilith gets to stand on Sanctuary doing nothing all game after getting drained by Eclipso, but Maya turns to dust? Is it just so the game could have a dramatic death scene of a character who is in the last game in kind of the middle of the story, like, um... <laughs> Yeah, I have a feeling that's the case, because Borderlands 3 likes to recycle things that worked in Borderlands 2, but does nothing to try and change them to make them better, like the aforementioned Kill Yourself mission, or this, just to name two. There's nothing wrong with callbacks or references to the previous games, like in Borderlands 2 we returned to Firestone, but they actually made changes to the old area to make it new and interesting again, not just copy and paste the same thing, but slightly worse and hope it has the same effect. 
Okay, so back to Ava now. I think if they made a few changes to her, she would have been a lot better. Like, one change that would have been super cool is if she was already a siren, and that was the reason that Maya took her as an apprentice instead of, oh, she's going to be a siren at some point. I know I talked about this earlier, but the idea of inheriting siren powers is really stupid. And now because they insist on having this really stupid plot point, it takes away opportunities for further storytelling. Like, how about instead of Ava being this random girl whose parents are dead, because of course they are, she was born on Athena's as a siren. And let's say for whatever reason, Athena's has some deeper connection with the sirens, so throughout the years, many sirens have been born and raised there. This would make Maya training Ava make a lot more sense, and would have even given Maya a reason to return to Athena's after everything happened with the vault map getting lost and stuff, because this is something I haven't really mentioned yet, but there is very little reason that all the vault hunters decided to scatter once the map was lost. Wouldn't you think this would be a very important thing that everyone would want to find? Apparently not, but whatever. In closing for Ava, she sucks. And I don't really like that they're trying to replace Maya with Ava. It seems super pointless and necessary because I can even see in the future Ava looking a lot like Maya. She has Maya's powers already, so she's basically just Maya, just like, super annoying. Alright, coming on to the next section, we're going to be talking about Hammerlock and Wainwright. Okay, these two characters I can genuinely say that I enjoy. Both of them are written very well and neither one of them is annoying in any way. I would say that Wainwright is actually the best new character that was introduced in Borderlands 3, in fact. So let's talk about Hammerlock first. I really like the hunting targets you can do for him throughout the areas in the game. I think most of these mini-bosses are really creative, and I always got excited when I found one. Then seeing a trophy from the kill in Hammerlock's room on Sanctuary was really nice as well. On top of that, his dialogue was superb. He just remains that gentleman he was in Borderlands 2. He was one of my favorite characters in that game as well. I don't really have a ton more to say about him other than a few scenes I liked him in, like the one where he told a story about Aurelia killing a lizard with a block of ice in an echo log. That was some very good storytelling, in fact. Most of the good story content in this game is actually found in the echo logs. I haven't heard them all, but the ones I have heard have been pretty great. I just wish the rest of the game was this well done. Anyway, I also really like the scene where Hammerlock stood up to Aurelia and took a bullet for Wainwright. It showed that he genuinely loves this man, and I can't lie, I'm a bit of a sucker for a well-written relationship. Even if it's a gay relationship, and I myself am not gay, I can still definitely appreciate the art. Now, in regards to Wainwright, he is also very well written, and I particularly like his voice acting. He just sounds like a southern gentleman, and I think it fits him very well. I also like the fact that he was never really able to see very good, so that's why he uses a shotgun all the time. It's just a small detail that I really appreciate about his character. I want more of this, not just I work out or I like coffee. But yeah, together I think they form a great pair, and it may be my favorite Borderlands relationship besides Krieg and Maya. Oh wait, they had to go and ruin that too by killing Maya and making it extra pressing because Krieg has been trying to become sane for her again, and he doesn't even know that she's dead now because Ava's a dumbass, and he's going to be so destroyed when he finds out about this, and I'm just so sad for him. Sorry, I just had to get that out real quick. Now we're getting close to the end here, I want to talk about Typhon de Leon. Now his character has also done really well in the game. Throughout the levels, we will find the echo logs of him talking about his adventures as the first Vault Hunter, and honestly, they're pretty cool. I didn't listen to them all in my playthrough, but it was still super cool to see him when he was finally revealed. We see all these depictions of him being a tall, slender, handsome man, but when we actually meet him, he's literally the exact opposite. I just thought it was pretty funny, just goes to show how some details can be warped and romanticized in Legends. Overall, I didn't really have any problems with him. The whole reveal that the Calypso twins are his kids was super lame, to be honest. I seen it coming the second he started talking about having a son and such. I just think the whole plot point was, well, pointless. Like, it didn't improve Tyreen as a character to find out that she had daddy issues, and the little fight that they had kind of sucked, where he's just like, Hey, got a grenade, I'm gonna blow you up now. You know, just in time for her to use a force field thing to block it and then send it back at him. And because of this, I felt nothing when he died. Like, he wasn't a bad character, but I definitely wasn't attached to him in any meaningful way. I can't really think of too much to improve his character or anything, as, like I said, he's not bad, and we kind of get a lot of him through the echo log, so who knows, maybe it was just me who didn't really get attached to him. He was definitely good for a few interesting stories, however. So before we wrap this up, I want to talk a little bit about a group of characters being Tiny Tina, Brick, and Mordecai. I do like them in this game. They don't play that big of a role in the main story, which is a little disappointing, but they do give lots of pretty interesting side missions. It was really cool seeing Tiny Tina all grown up, and now I'm not 100% sure if it was the same voice actor or not, I'm pretty sure it was, but either way, she did a fantastic job just sounding like an older version of Tiny Tina. I was a bit worried that she would sound too different, but I was very pleasantly surprised with that. The writers also translated her personality super well from Borderlands 2, which I will give them credit for. And yeah, honestly, I like Tiny Tina for what she was. My only real nitpick, I guess, would be to have maybe given her some more new stuff to do. Like, I mean, she was introduced in almost the exact same way by blowing up a bandit. One of her side missions was to get her Skag and Rike back to her. Basically stuff from Borderlands 2, but I'm not super angry about it because she is a side character, really. And especially the Enrique mission was different enough, I guess. And although I was never the biggest Tiny Tina fanboy to begin with, it was really nice to see her back again. 
Brick and Mordecai were also done really well. I like seeing more of Talon, and fighting through the ton of bandits with Brick is always entertaining, so I have no complaints about them. Even though I think after everything they've been through with Lilith, they should have played a much larger role in finding the vault map and helping with everything that happened after that. So yeah, that's pretty much everything I wanted to say in this video. It took me quite a while to get this out because I really wanted to gather my thoughts properly on it, and I really do hope you enjoyed. Obviously, all this was my personal opinion, as this is a topic that can be easily discussed, so if you have thoughts of your own, do feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. I will definitely be down there responding and having discussions with anyone who wished to do so. But anyway, that's all from me. I'll see you all in my next video. Peace out.